Okay, in the last couple of lectures, I've shown you two things. First of all, I've shown you how to think of a spring mass network as a, as a graph, with the masses as the nodes and the springs as the edges. I've then showed you how to work out the internal forces due to the springs on the masses, okay? And remember, I think I denoted those by uh, this vector Fi, and it was the weight minus the weighted Laplacian times x, where x here was the um, the vector of displacements, okay, from equilibrium. And then I showed you in the last lecture, I think, how to solve an equilibrium problem where everything was, all the forces were in balance, so nothing was moving. So the equilib, so the displacements of the masses were just constants that you had to find, okay? So they weren't changing in time. But of course, in a mechanical system, uh, things move around. And how things move around uh, is governed by Newton's second law. And so that's what I want to introduce to you in this lecture. We want to move away from equilibrium and move out of equilibrium and look at dynamics. That's going to be an important next step. And um, I don't know if you remember uh, from your high school physics or high school uh, days of some kind of physical science course, mechanics maybe, that you learnt this thing, F equals MA, which is Newton's second law. Okay, Newton's second law, and it basically tells you what the acceleration A is on a mass M if there's a net force of capital F on it. Okay. Now, the acceleration here is basically just the rate of, by defined to be the rate of change of the velocity, which of course is the rate of change of the rate of change of position. So in other words, if x, if, if a mass x is located uh, at position x, say, um, then it, the, so, so we're imagining now that x is, is changing in time. So x is the position on the, the, the x axis, say, of a mass, then the acceleration of the mass will be the second time derivative of that location with respect to time. Okay. All right, so what does F equals MA mean for the mass springs network, for example, that I've drawn uh, on this, at the top of this slide? Well, first of all, notice that, of course, I could, in principle, have uh, net forces, let's call that one F3, external forces on this, acting in addition. That could be due to gravity or some other reaction force or some other force on the system that's not to do with the springs, okay? And you remember, I encoded those in the last lecture as this matrix, this vector F, okay? So that would be kind of F1, F2, F3, okay? Where I've just drawn F3 there, but there could be other forces on masses one and two. Um, so those are the external forces. And they may or may not be present, depending on what the situation is. Maybe this is a zero gravity environment, so you ignore gravity. Maybe it's sitting on a table so that the, the reaction forces of the table cancel out the gravity forces in the, in the kind of perpendicular direction. So we're only really interested in dynamics in the plane or on the table. And then you don't really need to take those forces into account because the, the forces in that direction are always in equilibrium. Okay, but nevertheless, this could be hanging hanging spring mass system like I considered in the last example. Okay, now the net force then, if I consider this is the total force, total force on the on the masses, in this case there's three, on the three masses, then this is equal to the total external force plus the internal forces. That's the total forces on the masses. Okay, and then what we have to do is this is equal to this MA thing. Okay, so somehow uh, it's going to be related to the second derivatives in, t in, in time of this uh, displacement vector, which we're now going to assume is itself, if we call these phi 1 of t, phi 2 of t, phi 3 of t, these are the displacements of masses 1, 2, 3 in this case. Okay. And um, we're now assuming that those displacement can evolve in time. So, so the masses can kind of move around, perhaps oscillate. We'll see some oscillations of these masses in forthcoming examples. So um, our displacements now uh, are time dependent. And so the acceleration will be given by 
uh, this quantity here is a vector quantity. But of course, we have to incorporate the masses of the system, the ma. Okay, and because we're um, because we're um, in this vector situation now, we have to introduce, um, if you like, in this case, it will be a diagonal ma uh, matrix, just like we did for the conductance matrix, uh, or the spring constant matrix in the in the for the springs. This would be m1, m2, m3 with zeros of the diagonal, and then I call this this matrix m, and it's going to be three by three in this case because there are three masses. Okay, so let me just give myself some more space here. Um, what I've just shown you then is that uh, F minus KX, because what I'm using there is, of course, this equation that I wrote down earlier, um, is equal to some diagonal, uh, diagonal matrix 3 by 3 times D squared X by dt squared, okay? So this, my friends, is now the, the vector equation that we have to solve if we want to look at non-equilibrium situations. So in other words, when the, the displacements are not in equilibrium, like we did in the last example, but moving around in time, okay? And notice that we've got two matrices coming on here. We've got this diagonal matrix of the, the masses, and then we've got the weighted uh, Laplacian matrix, weighted by the diagonal matrix of the spring constants. Okay, so that's the setup for non-equilibrium uh, evolution of spring mass networks.